this is for the Tyler Huntley haters. First question came from my guy Julius. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well. The media is making it seem as if our season is over because Lamar is hurt, stressing the fact that Huntley is no Lamar. Lamar is no Mahomes. I mean, the fans and the media, I would be more upset if Huntley started winning. It's kind of crazy. Think about it. What if Lamar is out four games and Huntley has the offense looking fantastic? That leads us into the playoffs. Fans and the media will still be looking for Lamar. Nobody was looking for Flacco after he got hurt and he had done more for the organization. And Lamar wasn't winning pretty back then either. Look at this Broncos game. Huntley won the game against the number three defense, but they have so much to say on how he's not like Lamar. That's why the win was ugly. But if Lamar doesn't get hurt and he wins in the same fashion that Huntley did, the fans plus media would blame Greg Roman and lack of receivers. Uh, which one is it? Maybe. Just maybe Giro and John didn't call the game different. Maybe they just both had the same calls. It's just that Huntley plays like a Jalen Hurts. He takes what the defense gives him and utilizes all of his receivers to move the ball down the field methodically versus Lamar, who's always holding on, looking for that big play. And if he doesn't see the big play or Andrews, he runs. I'm just saying, what if the fact is that Huntley is just better at operating Giro's system and fitting the Ravens' philosophy than Lamar. Not to take credit from Lamar, if we won a Super Bowl with Huntley, heck, even an AFC championship with Huntley, the fans and media would be confused and spin the narrative of how the Ravens ruined Lamar instead of looking at it as a positive for Huntley and the organization. For what it's worth, I believe Huntley can do it, maybe even better than what we all expect. I could be wrong, but give that man a fair shot. Look at how they got behind uh, Purdy after one game. Go back to the Bears game with Huntley. He had a comeback win uh, and didn't get nearly as much fan and media praise as Purdy. Who? Uh, who's Purdy? I'm, I, that, I, I understood everything he was saying. I didn't necessarily agree, but I understood everything he was saying until then. But anyway, he said the other games we lost by three points, but nobody blamed the defense for not holding the lead for Huntley. I'm just saying your thoughts. Woo! Wow! What a way to start us off. <laughs> what a way to start us off. Um, man, uh, <laughs> it sounds like you ready for Lamar to move on after this season from everything that you were saying. Uh, but anyway, um, you're saying uh, people need to get more behind Huntley and give, give him a real shot. Uh, what about last year? Like, it, we were all behind Huntley last year, rooting for him to do well. But the Ravens, they lost every game. Every game that Huntley prepared for as a starter and teams prepared for him as a starter, they lost. They lost. I was just talking to one of my guys about this um, a couple days ago, and he, he was saying, well, hey, look, this, this year we, we can be a lot more optimistic because the team is a lot more healthier. And I told him, hey, that, that's, that's a great point. And, and I hope that Huntley does well. Uh, but based off of what we've seen so far, when the teams are prepared for him, he's lost. They've lost. The Ravens have lost. So that's what a lot of people are basing it off of. Um, now, we hope Huntley does his thing. Now, I, you did mention about him using all the receivers. You said maybe, maybe it's just that Huntley runs g system better than Lamar Jackson. Because he uses all the receivers, he spreads the ball around a lot more. He does spread the ball around a lot more. He spreads it a lot more, uh, but doesn't spread it higher. Um, and, and you can see the differences in the game plan. You can see the differences. Like, so a lot of time with Lamar, you can't, how can you use something that's barely out there? How can you use something that's barely out there? The, the tight end, when Lamar's on the field, they be having them tight ends on the field. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny, but it's really sad all at the same time. They'll have so many tight ends out on the field. They have Pat Ricard out there, wide receiver one, Pat Ricard. Shout out to him. He ain't no Drewski. That's, that's Moss. That's Moss. That's Calvin Johnson. That's Pat Ricard, Rice, whatever you want to call him, because they, they, they have him out there so much, and they put so much emphasis on him as a weapon when Lamar's out there. But when Huntley's out there, they're like, oh, no, no, we're, we're going to have our receivers out here more. And you see a clear difference. Again, with, with the weight, not even just with the personnel, but even the way that the stuff is called. With Lamar, you're saying he hold on to the ball for, for a long time. Yeah, he does because you're asking these receivers to go way downfield all the time. All the time. And, uh, and I think with Lamar, with, when there's a receiver that comes open like in his short, Lamar probably like, well, he probably don't even be looking for that sometimes because he's so used to all them receivers going way down the field. And then the offensive line, they not all that. So he, he had to wait, 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 wait. And then he has to start moving around. He has to start evading defenders and whatnot. And the, the, ga the, the game is a lot different. The game is called a lot different when Huntley's in there versus when Lamar's in there. And this is nothing new. 
This is like we 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 we've complained about this for a while. Like we wish that the Ravens would call more of a short, more up tempo passing game too. Not to not to get rid of the long balls, man. No, 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 no. Not to get rid of the deep balls. No, but to still incorporate a lot more of the short passing game to get more people involved, to get Lamar in the rhythm, to get the receivers and whatnot in the rhythm, to get more people active in the game. So this is not something that just popped up out of nowhere last week. During the game it, it, it is a much different game that they call And they play it different ways too man But it's cause the game is called much differently um, it, it, it sucks that People always make it a, a, a Huntley versus Lamar thing When this is just the starter and the backup QB It's the starter and the backup QB That's it One's the starter, one's the backup And that's it But I think one of the reasons why this whole Tyler Huntley, Lamar Jackson thing, why it gets so blown up and then so many people are talking about it and it gets like, it, it's, it's made bigger than what, I, it, what it should be in my opinion. Um, I think it's because of the situation with Lamar Jackson. I think um, had Lamar Jackson already been signed or had he not been in the contract year, I don't think it would be as big as what it, it is. I think a lot of people subconsciously too, and some people, they, they know they're thinking about it. But I think a lot of people subconsciously, they're thinking about the whole contract situation. And they're thinking about, hmm, Lamar Jackson? What if he got paid a lot of money and the Ravens kept him? Versus Tyler Huntley? What if he, the Ravens kept him, but he wouldn't make nearly as much as Lamar? We could run the same offense, get some more players. Maybe the Ravens would change their ways and start really investing into the offense more. Huh, I wonder what this team will look like moving forward with Lamar versus moving forward with Huntley. And I think that's on a lot of people's minds, and they don't even realize it. So it's, it's created this, like, this war. This war with fans like, oh, well, Tyler Huntley does this better. And fans like, oh, no, Lamar does this better. And it's just, it creates this war and this back and forth. And in my opinion, it shouldn't be that. Because one is a starter and the other is a backup. But I also think that the Ravens, they are not innocent from creating that war as well because of the way that they do things and the way that they operate uh, when Tyler Huntley's in there versus when uh, Lamar is in there. Um, so, again, we, me, personally, I'm hoping that Tyler Huntley does an amazing job for as long as Lamar Jackson is out. I hope he does an amazing job. And when Lamar gets back, I hope he does an amazing job and I hope he goes off when he gets back. So, I, I just want success for the team, straight up. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You too, team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven. Right and graven. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Question From Subs. If you would like to participate in Question From Subs, you can check everything down below in the description. Next question came from my guy, Brandon G. He said, what's going on? <laughs> I was talking, and I don't know what happened. But anyway, he said, what's going on? It's been a little minute since my last email. Hope all is well with you and the fam. Let's get to it. Sorry for the length ahead of time. Number one, when is the time to pull the plug on John Harbaugh? We all know Lamar saved his career in Baltimore, but his expectations haven't been met. Um... I mean, whenever the Ravens are ready to, to, to change the way that they do things, to change their philosophy, to upgrade, then it will be that time. But if they're not going to do that, then it's never going to be time. Uh, number two, he said, in my opinion, only way Greg Roman stays is if we win the Super Bowl. With that said, who are we thinking should be in consideration for head coach and offensive coordinator? I love a Sean Payton offense with Lamar. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, don't, don't, don't get ahead of yourself now, buddy. You talk about who, who should we consider for, for a head coach and offensive coordinator? Look. He's, now, if Ravens won a Super Bowl, I definitely don't think Greg Roman will stay. I think he will be going for sure. End of his contract, uh, Super Bowl offense. Well, hopefully it will be a Super Bowl offense, uh, not a 2000 Ravens type of uh, Super Bowl. But, hey, either way they got it, they'll get it. But I think uh, if the offense was doing their thing and, and Ravens won a Super Bowl, then Greg Roman would be going for sure. Uh, whether another college team opened up, whether the NFL team gave him a ch uh, an opportunity or a chance, uh, he'll be going either way. Um, but Sean Payton with Lamar, that'd be something. That'd be something. I think that he could, to, could maximize Lamar. But I don't think we'll ever see that. Number three, this is an unpopular thought, but if Snoop plays well, do you think EDC would think about trading Lamar or even drafting a new QB1? Um, yeah, I, I think they thought about, it, thought about that already. 
I hope it doesn't happen as far as them trading Lamar, but I think they definitely think about that. They, because as a business, the Ravens are a business. They're a franchise, so they got to think about every option, every possibility, every scenario. So even if they don't want to trade Lamar, they got to think about, okay, what if this thing doesn't work out? So they, they got to think about, they got to go down all of that stuff. Um, and he said, and what do you think the return would have to be to pull the trigger? Oh, they get a bunch of first round picks, some second round picks, right? Some third round picks too. They would get they would get a lot uh, for Lamar Jackson. He said, lastly, our offense needs a new identity. I understand there were injuries last season along with this one. In your opinion, what would be the best rebuild in detail to give us Ravens fans the offense we've always envisioned? I want that 2000 Ravens defense with that 2019 offense with the 2012 weapons. <laughs> Thanks that uh, for all that you do. You're definitely a Ravens icon. Oh, no, no icon. Not at all. Uh, but he said, enjoy yourself. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, Brandon. Um, what would I want as far as uh, the Ravens, um, their identity? Uh, yeah, still run the ball, but the, the passing game got to get with it, man. Uh, just more investment into the passing game, more quality investment into to coaching, into the scheme, into the receivers, into the quarterback. Um, just this offense and offensive players, they need to know that they are appreciated and not just running the ball. Next question came from my boy T. He said, what's up, Engraven? It's your boy T-Dog. Is it just me or did the Ravens offense look rejuvenated the moment Tyler stepped in? Rejuvenated with 10 points and they scored seven of them with 30 seconds left. And when did Tyler Huntley come in? The, the first quarter, right? That's rejuvenated to you? So, like, really? <laughs> I don't think that's rejuvenated, man. But anyway, let's continue. He said, um... Throws to the outside, throws to the inside, throws to the backs, throws down the field. Tyler using his down the field where? But all the other stuff, yeah. But down the field where? Uh, but anyway, Tyler using his legs effectively when he must. Uh, he got to learn to get down better. But my whole point is, in my eyes, don't lie. Lamar is not as talented as Huntley, but Huntley has the talent to be better than Lamar. Message. I can't stress how elementary Lamar passing game is and how the offense opens up when Huntley is in there. He has all the attributes Lamar has, but also is a traditional pocket passer. What more could you ask for? I love Lamar, but at his current level, he won't be able to get us to the Super Bowl with the scheme. Him and Greg Roman run. I like the Roman Huntley scheme a lot better. Wow. Whoa. Woo. Well, y'all are on it this episode. Y'all are on it. And he also said, I forgot to mention this, but do you think Harbaugh put in a word for his brother, for Greg Roman, to get the Stanford job because his, bro oh, his brother used to be the coach? Well, yeah, I think he definitely put in a word, but that word did not work. Um, oof. I disagree. But, again, everybody, everybody entitled to their own opinion. I, I, I disagree with you wholeheartedly. Um, I do think Tyler Huntley is talented, but I, I just don't think he's on Lamar's level. I just don't. And again, like we said earlier, I just think it's, it's a different game being called. But he also said, uh, I want to stir up some controversy. I would like your honest opinion on how this sounds. Obviously, the Ravens are in a pickle with Lamar. So what if the Ravens decided to go reload mode and decided to put Lamar on a trade block, Mark Andrews on a trade block, Stanley on a trade block, Patrick Green on a trade block, Chuck Clark on a trade block, and Bowser on a trade block? The Ravens could have enough riches to get a top flight wide receiver, get a top tackle, a top corner, top edge rusher, and still be able to build around already loaded team with the picks that they would have and the picks that they acquired. What do you think we could get back from them players? And what would be your first few moves? From First few moves in the draft. This this thing this thing's so crazy. I can't even talk right now. I can't even read it the right way, man. Um, what, what you gonna do with all that dead money? All that dead money from Ronnie Stanley. All that dead money from Mark Andrews. What you gonna do with all that dead bread? Patrick Queen. I mean, he only gonna have a, a a year left on his deal. Uh, well, two years left on his deal if they pick up the the, the fifth year option. Chuck Clark. I mean, I think he gonna be going anyway. Bowser gonna get a little bit of dead money with that because his contract ain't too big. But boy, yeah, you. That Ronnie Stanley is the that's that's and the Mark Andrews. You 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 just asking for dead money with this one. Ooh, let me see if this next question could help me get my sanity back. Next question came from my guy D3. He said the larger issue, consistency. Uh, good afternoon, Engraven and team. Keep it clean. My main problem with the Ravens is how they cons constantly say stack wins, yet when a player goes off in a game, they aren't used the same way the next game. Oh, that is such a great point. Now let's continue. He said, why? Are they scared of success? Example, James Prochet balled out against Denver last year, but it was a healthy scratch the next game. This year, uh, Duvernay balled against Cincy with over a uh, oh, excuse me, 100 multi-purpose multi yards, but was ignored the next week against the NY Giants. Then he was a weapon against the Bucks, but he was ignored again against the Saints. Drake had 119 yards against the Giants, but wasn't used the next week against Cleveland. The Ravens talk about building a bully, but they are too passive, in my opinion, and get conservative on offense and defense, especially before halftime and the end of the game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Prevent, prevent, prevent. You know, our coaches don't have that dog in them, and if players reflect their leadership, why do we expect the dog to come out of our players? Again, we are faced with the dilemma of not drafting that guy on offense or trading for him during the season. But what difference would it make if we got him but only utilize his talent every other week? 
Oof. What are your thoughts on that? As always, thanks for the content. I pray that you and your family and team keep it clean. Stay be safe and encouraged. Doing Lamar. <laughs> He said during Lamar's farewell season with the Ravens. Hurts my heart to say that. You might be right. I hope not, but we'll see. Um, that's a lot of that is coaching. A lot of that is coaching. Um, just not scheming up guys or just not having guys involved like that. Not having guys get opportunities consistently. Especially like what do playmakers do? Playmakers make plays. You go to your playmakers so they can make plays for you uh, game in, game out. Now, if the defense is taking away a, a, a player in the game, okay, well, shout out to that defense. But if you taking away that that player in the game, that's on you. Next question came from my boy, Michael B. He said, hey, Graven, Tyler Huntley or coaching? Hope all is well with the family, and I pray that you're having a blessed day. I may be reaching here, but I believe Tyler Huntley will be just fine if the coaching is clicking on all cylinders. Uh, most people want to talk about how Tyler Huntley lost all those games to end the season last year. But if my memory serves me correctly, I believe Huntley come competed fiercely and there were a number of critical coaching errors that cost us the games we should have won oh all the all the going for two you oh you yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, not to mention our defense was depleted as well if the ravens coaching staff corrects their mistakes and takes easy points and <laughs> and our defense continues to play at an elite level am i foolish to believe that snoop can keep us winning until lamar is back healthy much love respect and appreciation for your content keep going strong michael appreciate it mike the possibility is is, is definitely there it's definitely there that uh, Tyler Huntley, uh, that he that he keeps winning. Um, it's going to take everything, though. It's going to take him. It's going to take the offense. It's going to take the coaching staff. Uh, the, def the defense was big uh, last year. And, again, they were banged up. But, uh, yeah, coaching was just, ooh, last year was so frustrating. Um, the the, the two-point conversions, uh, what the, 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 the guys, the backups being left on islands. Um it, it was just rough, man. So hopefully this year, like you said, coaching can be clicking on all cylinders. Uh, so so Tyler Huntley and and, and he he had to be a little better too now, um, because that again that's one big difference between him and Lamar. Like I know everybody, oh Tyler Huntley, his completion percentage, his QB rating, and all that stuff is nice. It's nice, but are you winning? That's that's the biggest thing. Are you winning? Are you winning? And and even with that, are you playing winning football? There'll be sometimes where he really did. There'll be sometimes where he doesn't. And I know with the more experience, I think the comfortable, the more and more comfortable he would be and he would get. Because uh, last year was different. Like last year, he got thrown out there. He hadn't started consistently like ever. Well, in NFL level, obviously. Um, and last year was like, hey, Tyler Huntley, this, this is it right here. Um, and not again, not all of it was his fault. Uh, but bottom line, him as a starting quarterback, they lost. Uh, so now hopefully this year can be the exact opposite of that. For however long Lamar's out for, hopefully they can win everything. I don't know if this is a random question. Next segment came from my guy Elix. He said, Hey, Graven, how are you? How's the family life treating you? I don't really know if this is a question or a rant, but I'm going to say it anyway. I really want Lamar Jackson to leave the Ravens. Here's why, though. Year after year, they have failed him, but not providing him with adequate wide receivers when he needs it. They have failed him by not giving him a competent offensive coordinator. Time after time, again, they go out there and tell Lamar, Go with us this game and, and with what he has. Or go win us this game with what he has. I remember a few years, uh, the DeCosta, Eric DeCosta said that he wanted to build an indefensible offense. Oh, yes. I forgot all about that. Thank you for bringing it. I forgot all about that. Anyway, uh, yet he built the most predictable offense I've seen. I thought he wanted to build a bully. Uh, they build a choking defense when it matters the most, shaking my head. To me, they only, the only thing that came good is that we are getting more sacks and turnovers. I really hope they fire John William Harbaugh. This is unacceptable for him to get away with this travesty. Why are the Ravens doing this to Lamar Jackson after everything he done? Mm. Wow. That was, uh, that was something right there. Um, yeah, I, I really love that part about the indefensible offense. I, 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 I forgot. All about that And if you want to build An indefensible offense uh, it's something that people Can't defend right So you want to have it The strongest At every level That you could possibly Make it And Ravens ain't done that They ain't done it um, But you asked the question Why Why do they operate like that I, I just don't I just think there seems to be a Sort of a lack of appreciation uh, For what they have I think that's it uh, But this offseason We'll really get to see uh, What they appreciate And how much they appreciate it Ravens next QB What's up Engraven Hope all is well I've been feeling like Lamar Is very frustrated And unhappy with things So let's say he doesn't get Resigned and request a trade If this happens Where do you see the Ravens Going at QB Or would you like Who would you like them to target Either through the draft Or someone in the league mm. uh, I hope we don't have to Have this conversation uh, But like we talked about earlier, the Ravens are a business, so they got to think about it. And us as fans, uh, we can think about it, too. I mean, we can think about whatever we want to, but we, we can think about it as well because it is a real possibility. Hopefully it doesn't happen, though. Um, the way that I think they, they would do it if it went down, 
Uh, I think it will be a mix of uh, Tyler Huntley and I think they will draft a, a QB early. Now, it depends on um, the Ravens, their draft capital and where they will be picking it. Because um, I think that they I think they wouldn't mind rolling with Tyler Huntley for like a year. And if there's no QBs that they really love in the draft, then they will just wait it out a year. Um, and I think that they will be comfortable just rolling with Huntley for a year because they would have him for another year on his contract and then uh, and that could be sort of an evaluation period for him uh, and just for everybody else like the staff and whatnot um that's what i think that they would do and yeah see a lot of people thinking about the same thing man and then we we getting closer and closer to the end of the year the end of the season man so anyway next question came from my guy hayden he said i ain't grave and hope all is well and hope the fam is well i just had an idea and wanted to hear your thoughts on it i know this won't happen and it's very unrealistic but how would you feel uh, if the ravens traded lamar for a top three pick and took bryce young with the pick he has a ton of potential and is a great pocket passer and we will not have to pay him for a few years so we can build around him oh that last part that you said they didn't have to pay lamar for all those years and how did they build around him sell the team next question came from my guy matthew he said i've come to the realization you can fire giro harbaugh even to costa the reason we can't get any receivers except on rookie deals is because our owner is cheap so he pushes up the philosophy that run game run game and stop the run uh which all are important uh, and key factors but pushing this narrative allows for him to pay lower in positions as as running backs fullbacks defensive tackles among other defensive players which don't have uh, as high an average payout by position while letting pass rusher walk and not signing any wide receivers usually higher price position groups uh, and not worrying about breaking the bank uh, that is also why he has such a problem paying both his franchise QBs over the years because he is a cheapskate and doesn't want to pay anyone real money unless given no other choice. Uh, this team is not going to change because of our owner, no matter who is changed under him, unless he somehow gets a change of heart, which I don't see because billionaires are usually set in their ways. Or are changing ownership. Sorry for the long rant, but what are your thoughts? Um, I can't. I, I wouldn't call him cheap. I wouldn't call Steve Bishotti cheap. I mean, they paid Ronnie Stanley. Uh, they paid Nick Boyle. Um, they paid Mark Andrews. Um, they paid. Yeah, you, you brought up Flacco. I, I I wouldn't say cheap overall. I, I would say cheap in certain areas. Um, and yeah, the the philosophy that they do run it it does allow for you to not spend, or it doesn't require for you to spend money on some of those uh, key positions, especially on offense. But they they also paid Marlon Humphrey. Um, they obviously paid Marcus Williams. They 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 paid uh, Earl Thomas a couple years ago. It didn't work out, but hey, they they did pay him. Um, they had paid Marcus Peters. Um, his contract getting ready right now, but they 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 paid him too. Um, Terrell Suggs obviously. Uh, Elvis Dumaville. When that whole thing happened with the Denver Broncos, they paid him. Um, so yeah, they 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 do uh, most of the, the the big money stuff and the more consistent payments. They do go. They are tailored more toward the the defense. Um, but on offense, here and there, they do make some moves. And with Ronnie Stanley, he was the second highest paid when they paid him left tackle at the time. And Mark Andrews at his time, I forgot where he was at. But they did take care of him. But um, it's just those those premium positions. That's where they don't really dish out the money to. Next question came from my guy, Cyber. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing well. I was just wondering during the Broncos game, why the Ravens completely switched the game plan when Huntley came in? Uh, they used less Ricard and Oliver and spread the offense more with receivers and running up-tempo quick offense, while with Lamar, they used a lot of Ricard and heavy packages with no up-tempo at all. I might sound crazy, but I truly believe the Ravens are trying to sabotage Lamar. Just think about it. Lamar is at his best statistically when you spread the field with weapons and run a faster-paced offense. We saw that all last year with the comebacks and the numbers Lamar was putting up. He was the most efficient quarterback at running no Another example is the Buccaneers game in the second half where you saw them use lesser card and more receivers in a faster pace offense. Lamar went 8 for 8 for 100 yards and two touchdowns, and we scored on every drive running a faster pace. My question is, why don't they keep doing it with Lamar when he's at his best with it? It just makes no sense. Hey, you answered your own question. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, they only consistently do it for Huntley, but not Lamar. It's like they don't want him to succeed. Sorry for such a long rant. Just blows my mind that we are really holding Lamar back. I truly wish he leaves the Ravens just to go to a team who actually wants to maximize his ability. Thanks so much for what you do, and have a great day. Wow. I, I appreciate that, uh, Sabri. And you, yeah, you, you answered your own questions. You answered your own questions. So 
You was spot on, man. I got Earl with the solutions. He said, what's good, Engraven? Hope all is well. I was smoking a cigar and watching videos, and I had an epiphany. This Lamar contract ain't that hard as it's made out to be. Keeping the thought of the franchise tag for the next two years already has him with a two-year fully guaranteed contract. Why not just take those numbers, add five mil a year to the total, and just give him a two-year <laughs> What and just give him a two year deal? It's good for Lamar because if he gets hurt in in year one of the tag, they might not tag him again. But on a deal, he's already good. I mean, a two year deal so short. What the quarterback gonna sign a two year deal? Like they for for that they they might as well just franchise him if they I mean, if they're gonna give a quarterback a two year deal. No man, just just roll right just ride out with the franchise tags, man. But in that case, if, if I do still think I really think that if they do the whole franchise tag thing. I think he will request a trade. But we'll see. We won't know till we know, and we won't know till we get there. And, I mean, this offseason, we'll start to get there and see how it goes down. The Ridiculous Ravens. Next question came from my guy, Les Goody. He said, what's up, Engraven? Watching the Broncos game, I say this in the fourth quarter. Shout out to Team Keep It Clean. Been watching along on the live stream, too. And the ironic humor of you and the guys in the chat is funny. With these Ravens, you got to laugh or cry. Yeah, man, that's the thing, man. Um, whether the Ravens doing good, whether the Ravens doing bad, we're going to have a good time, man. We're going to have a good time, regardless. Uh, some stuff that they do may be a little frustrating at times, but we're still going to enjoy the process regardless. So I, I appreciate that. But he said, in need of a laugh, given how bad we are looking, my question is this. What's the most ridiculous scenario you can envision for the Ravens in our next game? You know these Ravens are going to do something ridiculous again. Shaking my head. Much peace and love to you and your family. Appreciate it. Um, mm. Most ridiculous scenario, I could see them... Having Pat Ricard throw a pass That's what I'm going to go with Because they did Proche last week It'll be against the Steelers um, I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't really know how the Steelers defense is doing this year I ain't really been paying them too much mind um, But I can, see them, I, I can see them having Pat Ricard throw a pass to, But who will be too? To Tyler Huntley Next question came from my guy Howard He said what's happening in Graven I know the hot topic of the day is Lamar Jackson's knee injury I just saw a clip of Skip and Shannon's Undisputed And they were talking about the situation And Skip brought up the nugget He posted about Lamar not being happy over the contract situation In the process I don't believe Skip intentionally let it slip That it was a player on the team that he got the info from uh, When Skip posted the video on Twitter about this source within the Ravens I didn't think it was a player or teammate I know it's not the major but just a little tidbit to think about Your thoughts? I mean, it, it, well, it would have to be a player. It could be a player. I mean, it could be a player. It could be a coach. It could be anybody. Uh, NFL's a nasty business, and, and people going to talk. People be talking. That's how these agents, these people, these reporters, that's how they get their info because people be talking. So whoever it was, I don't know, but it was somebody. The wide receivers that could have been. Next question came from my guy, Manny. Well, he said, what's up, Engraven? Shout out to Mexico. With Lamar not having elite wide receivers, we could have had one in the making, but Harp said no. Uh, we could have had two in the making, but Harp said no. Uh, Harp's could have told Giro design plays for these two wide receivers, but he said no. We know what Shamar Bridges and Benjamin Victor are capable of in those 50-50 balls. And they have showed uh, the case in the preseason, and Des Bryant and the wide receiver court knows about it. They're tall, fast, and are hungry dogs when fighting for that jump ball, but that old stinky philosophy of just running the ball and play defense doesn't allow them to see that we have two wide receivers that had the potential to be 95% close to what we had in Torrey Smith. Uh, when Flacco just threw that ball up, and went, oh, he went and got it. Just picture it. Shamar and Victor at the start of the season playing with Lamar, having that chemistry to develop while Bateman and Duvernay take a break. But Hobbs said no, and the philosophy won't change until he is gone with your thoughts. And just like Lamar for the Steelers game, I'm out. Um... Well, we did see them in preseason make some plays. Uh, it was against backups, though. That's something you got to keep in mind. It was it was not against starters. But we will never know how these guys will be against starters unless they play against starters. Um, with Shamar Bridges, he did get hurt. He had a surgery, so it would have been impossible for him to really even be out there. Uh, but now they did bring him back, so they got a chance to make it right, right? Next question came from my guy, Gold Morano. He said, reality check time. And Greg, I hope you're having a joyous time with your family. Let's take a moment to do a reality check. We first have to admit that our Ravens are not who we thought they'd be coming out of another undefeated preseason. Next, you know, I forgot about that whole preseason thing. But anyway, he said, next, I think you'll agree that the Lamar, the, the current seventh biggest salary cap hit in the NFL, has not exactly made a strong case for his desire to strike a guaranteed deal worth a quarter of a billion dollars. And with Steve Bashotti cautiously tracking the performances of recent big money makers, Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, Aaron Rodgers, Kyler Murray, and Dak Prescott, he likely all but assuredly will choose to use his money to improve the team in a more balanced way. Yeah, I could see that happening. He said, I have a very strong belief that Bashotti and EDC have already made the decision not to improve their current offer to Lamar and wouldn't be surprised if EDC hasn't already had a preliminary discussions with ATL and or Tampa Bay about a tag and trade deal. Uh, so it's not too early to ask the question, who will be under center for the Ravens in 2023? That's a great question because we just don't know yet. We don't know. 
Ravens are the only quarterback they got under contract is Tyler Huntley. Right now, now, obviously, they could put the tag on Lamar, but that's the only one they got under contract right now, so we will see. Anyway, he said, we all know that this organization has a great difficulty in drafting quarterbacks, so assuming that if given the opportunity to attempt to draft a new QB, that EDC would surely use his draft skills to come away with the next Kyle Bowler. <laughs> I can't stand you, man. Uh, who would you make a trade for or a contract offer to, and then who do you make? Who do you believe that EDC will make a trade or con- trade for or contract offer to? He listed Tyler Huntley, Jimmy Garoppolo, Zach Wilson, Baker Mayfield, Gardner Minshew, Joe Flacco, Teddy Bridgewater, Cooper Rush, Sam Darnold. Uh, I think Tyler Huntley for sure. I think Tyler Huntley will be the guy that they will go with. Uh, if that scenario did happen, I, I think it would be Tyler Huntley because he's somebody that they like. He's somebody that's already in the building. He's somebody that they're comfortable with. So I think it would be Tyler Huntley. And then he said, finally, do you still stand by your 12-5 and 5 prediction? Or are you ready to change your prediction to align more like with more with my 9-8 and 8 prediction? Looks like they'll finish more like 8 Eight and nine with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter of this Denver game. I see no way that our anemic offense finds a way to score a touchdown. Uh, and don't look in the rearview mirror. Pittsburgh and Cleveland are coming. Well, I'm glad you ended up being wrong on that one. Because um, they did obviously score the touchdown at the very end and they won. Um, yeah, I did say 12 and 5 at the beginning of the season. They can still get it. They they don't got much air, much room for air. That's, that's dropping literally one more game and that's it. I think they can still get it. Uh, yeah, they, it's, it's, so it's technically possible. I mean, the way the team look, I don't know, but it is technically possible. Uh, and he also said, please allow me to pose this question to you. In addition to watching our quarterbacks pass production numbers fall uh, precipitously. And, oh, precipitously. I don't even be using that word. But anyway, uh, and then knowing that Lamar has now suffered injuries and multiple unspecified illnesses over the past three seasons, has he actually decreased his trade value in addition to his contract value? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so because pe- people know this Ravens offense. They know what the Ravens do. They know what they do. Uh, but anyway, um, after now injuring his all-important knee, which teams will be willing to give EDC two first-round picks and two second-round picks plus more in the same manner in which Denver did for Russell Wilson and Cleveland did for Deshaun Watson? If traded with EDC get the value that he'd hope to get for our star-studded quarterback? I'm thinking Lamar's value is dropping as we watch the performances of Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, and Josh Allen. I, I don't think so. I get where you're coming from as far as the the, the, the knee injury now um, and the numbers not looking so pretty. Um, but, again, I, I think people look at this Ravens team and they look at what's surrounded, what they surrounded Lamar with as far as the, the personnel, the scheme as well, the coaching staff. And I think a lot of teams are looking at it like, oh, okay, that's what they did. No, 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 no. We, we know what we can do because they, they, they can see this dude's potential. Ravens haven't tapped this potential. I think other teams are probably looking at it like, okay, if he does come available, hopefully he doesn't. But if he does come available, we know what we can do with him. Anyway, he said, Lamar seems to have fallen behind the pack. We gave a second and a fifth round for pick for Roquan Smith, so we know EDC is just salivating to get those picks back and more. Lamar is his ticket to recoup those last two picks. We'll surely end up with two more good defensive players in the next Joe Flacco or Kyle Bowler. The last question on this episode came from my guy, Javon. Ooh, this was an episode right here, boy. He said, sabotage. What's up, Engraven? This might be a long one, but fam, hit me out. First, I want to say thank you for everything you do. I remember when I first found your page, it was after the Ravens lost to the Steelers two years ago when they called back. Lamar spectacular run touchdown for Holt. Oh, I remember that one. I remember that, that run. That was a nice touchdown run. They called it back. Was that the Willie Sneed game too? I think it was. But anyway, he said, I was looking for the post-game interview and stumbled across your YouTube and uh, I've been watching and been a supporter ever since. So once again, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you for, for watching and thank you for sticking it out with us. We appreciate it. He says, so I know everyone, if they watch the game, saw how the offensive plays calls were different for Huntley than Lamar. More quick passes, three wide receiver sets instead of tight ends, and our wide receiver one, a record, didn't go out for many routes. I would hate to say that the Ravens are trying to sabotage Lamar, but that's what it looks like in action rather than words. They don't get him a talent weapon other than Andrews. They trade away his best wide receiver to date in Hollywood and got no one to replace him at all. Uh, they bank on his running ability, which I feel like is why our pass blockers are in and the play designs are longer in development. And then on top of that, Harbaugh and the head coach comes out and says, we don't scheme wide receivers open to a quarterback that's like a slap in the face that is true mm. that would well, i remember when he said that that is true uh but anyway he said imagine the warriors not scheming to get steph better looks from three that's what a coach and a team is supposed to do the line isn't horrible but we can't act like lamar isn't running away on at least 70 percent of his dropbacks even huntley was running for his life i always see people mad at lamar for holding on to the ball and not throwing it away or running I'm not saying he doesn't have a problem with that sometimes uh, but rarely do i see people questioning the line for long development play call i mean obviously we have quicker ones in the playbook look at huntley in some games in the past with lamar you have to help your quarterback he shouldn't have to get you out of a situation every single time 
Literally, every time he got hurt was because of bad offensive line play and him being pressured. Yeah, the concussion in the Bills game, um, the ankle injury against the Browns. Yeah, that's when Jock came straight through and he was getting pressured. And then, of course, uh, in this last game, Denver, the, those pass rushers just feasting on Lamar. He says, so the question is, what are the Ravens doing to even have a chance of keeping Lamar? That money would have to be right. And I, I think the direction of the team would also have to be. But I think, obviously, I think the money is first and foremost. He said, and we haven't even talked about... Oh, should have kept reading. He said, and we haven't even talked about the money situation. I love the Ravens I have since a kid, but the Ravens are messing up with Lamar, man, and it's sad. It seems like they didn't expect him to be this good with so little around him. It's like their actions are saying, Lamar, if you're going to do it, you have to do it yourself because we aren't going to help you. I mean, look at his offensive contributions, more than 90%. I mean, come on, man. I don't want him to leave. I've lived in Baltimore my whole life, and even with Ray and Reed here, I've never seen Baltimore this happy and full of energy. I mean, people that have never been interested in football love the Ravens because of Lamar. Even some other opposing teams fans love Lamar. And if he leaves The energy won't be the same I can guarantee Sorry for the long rant But I felt this was a safe space to do so Hey, that's what it's about, man I, I really appreciate that part That That is my favorite part About everything that you said That this is a safe space to do so Because that's exactly What we wanted and needed to be So I appreciate that um, Say God bless to all of the team Keep it clean And everyone keep your heads up Because the season isn't over No, it is not Um yeah, for, I mean, for, for them to keep him. He says, so the question is, what are the Ravens doing to even have a chance of keeping Lamar? It's, again, the, the, the money. It's going to have to be the money. It's going to have to be that The money is going to have to be right. Now, I think Lamar is, is, would still be looking beyond the money, but just be looking at how the team is shaping up. What are they looking to do? How, how are they going to progress? How, did, how would they help him progress? Um, I think he'll be looking at all of that because I, I don't think the money would just be enough. Um, cause the money could come, whether it be from the Ravens, it come from somebody else too. But I think that's where it starts. That's where the conversation would even have to start, but then it will continue and then progress even more and develop even more with, all right, so what else are you going to do for me to help not only get me to that next level, but actually help get the team to that next level. Yeah, this feels like a dream.